Tonight on Q2, stopping a scammer. We called uh, Kylene and told her you know, we had a fire. She says, okay, you're covered. Just call the office. I'll get back to you. About an hour later, a half hour later, she called and said, well, you're not covered. A well-known Montana insurance agent loses her license after fraudulent findings, plus a river mission. The amount of asphalt that they can actually remove off those rocks is a lot less than you can on the sand. For the first time, we hit the Yellowstone as crews continue to clean up after June's train derailment. And up, up, and away. When you get in the air, it's one of the most peaceful things that you'll, you'll ever know because you're actually traveling with the wind. Look towards the skies. The Big Sky Balloon Rally is back in the Magic City. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this Thursday. I'm Russ Riesinger. Our top story, a Rosebud County insurance agent has been permanently barred from practicing and could now face legal charges after being accused of scamming residents and businesses out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's a story we first brought you back in April when the investigation began, yet many of those impacted remain in disbelief and are seeking justice. Our Kelsey Marison traveled to Foresight and has the latest. That insurance broker permanently lost her and her business's licenses on July 12th. Now many in Foresight are left wondering, what's next? You know, it's just, it's heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. One of the only words Don Perdon has to describe what happened to him. We lost all of 48 years worth of photos. We lost DVDs. I lost 48 years worth of all my tools, my welding, my construction that we've been building up so we could retire. Back in 2021, after paying his yearly insurance premium in full to Kylene Hagedone of Rosebud County Insurance in Forsyth, Perdon's property was engulfed in flames, destroying 48 years of memories. And we called Kylene and told her you know, we had a fire. She says, okay, you're covered, just call the office, I'll get back to you. About an hour later, a half hour later, she called and said, well, you're not covered. Perdon's response was one of shock. We said, well, what do you mean we're not covered? We just lost 48 years worth of stuff, Kai. And she said, well, the paperwork never got done. Stories like Perdon's started to pile up, leading to an investigation. I think it's going to be one of the larger cases in Montana whenever it comes to insurance. Downing's investigation revealed that customers who reportedly paid full premiums were later notified by insurance companies their policies had been canceled for non-payment. In other cases, attempts to pay premiums by Hagedone were rejected because of insufficient funds. With Rosemary County Insurance and the civil end of it, that is, that is pretty much finished. It will move on to a criminal part of the case. Rosebud County Sheriff Alan Fulton says a criminal investigation is in progress, something her victims say is necessary. We lost a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff. We're not the only one. She needs to feel like she did have some consequences, that she did hurt people, you know, in which she did. She impacted a lot of people. In Forsyth, Kelsey Marison, MTN News. Tonight, a Billings family is searching for their loved one after she went missing in Hot Springs, South Dakota Monday. According to the Falls River County Sheriff's Office in South Dakota, Jeannie Schweigert walked away from her vehicle north of Hot Springs near a hiking trail, but never returned. Authorities have no direction of travel, and she does not have her cell phone with her. Schweigert, who is from Billings, is not familiar with that area. Several emergency personnel agencies have joined in the search, but have found nothing so far. They say as of now, there's no evidence of foul play or an abduction. You're asked to call 911 or the Falls River County Sheriff's Office with any information. Cleanup crews continue to make progress tonight downstream from the site of June's train derailment, already collecting around 120,000 pounds of asphalt material. And today, for the very first time, we got to tag along on one of those operation efforts as they still have more than 100 miles of river to survey. Our Haley Monaco was there and has the latest from the Yellowstone River. The emergency response phase is to collect as much asphaltic material as possible. This is what life has looked like for cleanup crews for nearly a month. This is hard work. It's hot work. Loading up a boat every day on the Yellowstone River and searching for an estimated half a million pounds of asphalt material that were spilled when a train derailed just east of Reed Point. But it's paying off. For the first time since cleanup has started, we got an up-close look at the process. Over 100,000 pounds of that material has already been picked up, some a long ways away from the spill. 
Crews are actively cleaning up the asphalt here on this island just outside of Laurel, 45 miles downstream from where the train derailed. The asphalt uh, is, is in a variety of different sizes. Uh, there's very small pieces, there's very large pieces. Right now, the crews are really focused on getting the largest of those pieces. Around 150 people are working 12-hour days, seven days a week. Bags upon bags are filled, loaded onto a boat, and taken back to shore to haul to dumpsters. This is an example of the asphalt on the river here that crews are still trying to pick up. And you can see just how hard it is to actually clean. So crews are meticulously trying to get this in bags while still preserving the natural habitat around. At this point, we don't know how much asphalt material left is actionable. And by actionable, it means that we can pick it up without doing more harm to the environment than good. Crews are having to adapt to the daily change in water levels as well as the constant heat, but are still making efforts to move quickly downstream cleaning. We still are in kind of the emergency cleanup phase um, of, of this incident. Um, the state will be involved for the long haul um, in kind of making sure that this cleanup gets to its completed point. A completed point that is still unknown. On the Yellowstone River, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Drugs and speed are suspected in a fatal crash that left a Billings man dead early Monday morning. It happened at the intersection of Grand and Zimmerman. The highway patrol says the 76-year-old man killed in the crash was traveling west on Grand in a Jeep Cherokee when an F-250 pickup heading south on Zimmerman ran through the light and into the driver's side of the Jeep. The driver of the F-250, a 28-year-old man from Idaho, was not injured. Billings police are investigating. No word yet if any charges have been filed. And a 52-year-old Billings man is dead after colliding head-on with a semi last night on Montana Highway 3 near Acton. That crash happened at mile marker 25 when the man was traveling northbound and veered into the southbound lane, striking the semi. Speed is a suspected factor in the crash. The 51-year-old semi-driver, also from Billings, was not injured. Thanks very much for your pictures at weather at KTVQ.com. And I was just blown away with this one from Leon. He was at Yellowstone National Park, Yellowstone Lake there with a shot of the Milky Way. Leon always comes through with those great shots of the late night sky. But by morning, Tracy Glow grabbed this one here south of Billings. You see some of the smoke and haze that started to move in. Thanks, Tracy, for sharing that one. But it was a little different look at the sky around Livingston first thing in the day. You can see some of those pink clouds out there and for Billings first thing in the day at the big sky balloon rally going on. We have the hot air balloons going up and they will over the next few mornings. You can go out and watch them at Amon Park. There's a lot of heat building in. We'll talk about that with the forecast details. Going to the doctor is not always an easy decision, but shrugging off something as small as a canker sore can end up having major implications and doctors say it's more important than ever to get checked out when something feels off even if it's minor. Tonight, MTN's Jackie Coffin tells us the story of one Billings man on a journey to find his smile again after a small spot turned into a much larger problem. The path to finding your soulmate isn't always so clear, but when Dave Middleton and Teresa DeBreeze reunited three years ago after growing up together in Shepherd, things clicked. We just kind of reconnected later in life. The couple shares their lives, their pets, their sense of humor, but there was one thing Dave wasn't sharing with Teresa. I just tried every home remedy that was possible to get rid of it as you normally do because they go away. Well, this one didn't go away. What he thought was a canker sore stuck around for eight months before he decided to get it checked out. And as I sat down with Dr. Benil, we just started talking. She looked at it and she goes, uh, yeah, hmm. She thought it was pretty interesting, and she said we need to take a biopsy of it. That day was the first time he told Teresa something was off. So I went to the doctor today, Teresa, and they took a biopsy of my tongue. She didn't get mad. She didn't do anything. She said, can I see? I said, yeah. So she looked at it, and she goes, oh, my goodness. The size of it was pretty good size. The biopsy revealed everyone's greatest fear cancer, 
specifically mouth cancer, that had also traveled to Dave's lymph nodes. Dave underwent surgery and radiation at Billings Clinic. The radiation proved to be one of the hardest things in his life. Because we're in here for six weeks, five days a week. Persisting through pain, Dave finished his radiation just three weeks ago. It makes me very excited to see my patient smile because I know I was staring at the nerve to the lip that makes him smile and it's still perfect. We have an incredible team to be able to assist people, but the primary person in that has a huge role in how they're able to make it through. It also helps when that primary person has their own primary person. Because I think we've changed. It's changed our lives. Looking at cancer is a small blip in the rest of their lives. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, one woman aims to bring back a historic Levina Hotel. Only if you could look beyond its haunting past. We'll head inside next. And later, we take to the skies in a hot air balloon and get a bird's eye view of Billings. That's coming up in just a bit.